Welcome everyone to Offer Vault News. I'm your host, Eddie Graham. Here are the two main stories this week. Facebook is making headlines once again, and this time it's because their Facebook ads manager is dropping the ball leading up to the holidays. Also, with robocalls becoming an increasingly serious problem, we're going to break down the most popular types of robocall scams and how to best avoid them. But first, here's a rundown of the top headlines this week. Profit Kings Media, run by alleged scammer Yusuf Yalda, is shutting down and not paying any of their bills. Complaints are servicing that PKM is closing its doors and selling data. They have not been paying any of their outstanding bills or invoices. Before you decide to work with somebody or a certain company, you gotta do your own research, people. Expect to get hit with spam and have people reaching out. Indian police raid New Delhi call center targeting Canadians. New Delhi police have arrested 35 people and shut down a call center which scammed Canadians out of their money using fraudulent phone calls involving their social insurance numbers. The place was called Cybercell and Police Commissioner Shamir Sharma described it as a swanky international cheating scam call center. The police commissioner went on to explain, it was learned that the scammers are cheating innocent people based in Canada on the false pretext of saving them from non-existent social insurance number or SIN violations. When police arrived at the call center, they discovered several fraudulent calls in progress with computer screens showing Canadian numbers. The four men who allegedly own the call center were not present during the raid and are currently being sought after by police. The call center operated during the night in India, which is daytime for most of Canada. Police also seized equipment including 55 computers, 35 phones, and scripts that directed workers on what to say during each scam. According to the police commissioner, the scam starts with a robocall claiming to be from Service Canada. It would usually state that there had been several allegations linked to the target's SIN number and that they would be arrested if they did not call back. Those who did call back were then subjected to further threats before being offered a one-time chance to pay and settle the matter. The scammers would direct payment be made via prepaid credit cards, iTunes gift cards, or Bitcoin. Hold on a second. They accepted payments via iTunes gift cards? Like, really? According to officials, at least one Canadian had been duped out of $13,500 from the SIN scams. That's a lot of money in iTunes gift cards. <laughs> Continuing our conversation about scams, the feds charged 10 men in Nigerian online romance scam. This headline comes from Tulsa, Oklahoma. At least 10 men in several different states have been charged in a Nigerian romance money laundering scheme that swindled victims out of more than $1.5 million. U.S. Attorney Trent Shores said during a news conference that many of the victims were senior citizens with an Oklahoma resident among them. Shores described the scam as, the defendants enriched themselves and their cohorts by preying on vulnerable victims hoping to find love and companionship online. So far, FBI agents have arrested seven of the defendants. The other three still remain at large. Most of those targeted were seniors, but authorities warned that anyone could fall victim to the deception. Anyone can fall victim to phone and internet scams. But seeing a romance scam and money laundering conspiracy that resulted in the exploitation of elderly Americans is just shameful. That's what Shores had to say. According to the indictment, since 2017, the suspects have concealed the operation's profits by moving money between several bank accounts that were opened using fake identification papers. The scam followed a pattern in which defendants would pretend to be American citizens. And then they would ask victims for relatively low-cost items such as gift cards and cell phones. 
before asking for larger amounts of money to cover travel or work costs as the online relationships progressed. But in reality, the defendants were allegedly using the money to, quote, salvage vehicles and car parts to export them overseas, typically to Nigeria. So they were catfishing old people into online relationships in order to scam them out of money. Trent Shores was right. It is shameful. Finishing up our opening segment, we'd like to congratulate eLocal on recently being acquired. eLocal has been chosen as the platform to build home serves home expert business in the United States. Congratulations to the entire eLocal team. The holiday season is here. Brands are gearing up for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, two of the biggest shopping days of the year. But if you're planning on running a Facebook or Instagram advertising campaign, you might want to spend your money elsewhere. Facebook's ads manager is dropping the ball. Ad buyers and brands are reporting multiple issues with Facebook's ad platform leading up to Black Friday. For our first main story this week, we are going to explore the chaos that currently is the Facebook ads manager. Let's start by going through some of the issues that ad buyers are having with the notoriously unpredictable platform. Ad buyers reported encountering continuous error messages while trying to set up campaigns, delayed approval times for ads, and reporting delays and inconsistencies. All these problems have led to lower returns on ad spend for some of the buyer's clients, according to agency sources. One of the biggest issues buyers are reporting with Facebook Ads Manager is the longer times of getting ads approved. Zach Stuck, founder and CEO of Homestead Studio, an agency that manages between $500,000 and $750,000 a month spent on Facebook Ads Manager for clients, has reported issues with delayed reporting and inconsistencies in the reporting from campaign level to ad set level, making it difficult for buyers who want to look at their accounts from a high level and optimize accounts for clients, according to Stuck. Another problem he mentioned is that post IDs for ads aren't showing up as they normally would, which makes it difficult to duplicate ads across multiple accounts and keep social proof on those ads as they are used with different campaigns. The Facebook Ads Manager has had a lot of errors over this past year, and now within the last two to three months, as the holidays approach, the glitches and issues have only gotten worse. This is giving buyers a lot of anxiety, as you can imagine, but they are still trying to remain hopeful that Black Friday and Cyber Monday will make up for everything. So a lot of these buyers are in a hole because their clients' Facebook ad campaigns are underperforming. And now they're banking on Black Friday and Cyber Monday to get them out of this hole, but the ad platform they're trying to use right now is shoddy and unreliable. So they're in a really tight spot and they got a lot riding on these holidays. <laughs> and now most buyers are going to continue using the Facebook ad platform, but a lot of them are strongly considering alternatives like Snapchat, Pinterest, and TikTok, where they can boost spending to make up for the lack of performance from Facebook. For direct to consumer brands that are focused almost entirely on Facebook and Instagram, it's a major problem. Investor Nick Sharma of DTC Brands had this to say. Everyone right now is talking about the same thing. We're all on group chats talking about what are other really good and somewhat scalable sources of traffic we can buy. It's difficult right now. Everyone has specific revenue numbers to hit, so they have to find a solution regardless. People are expecting things to calm down after the fourth quarter. So the current state of ad buyers is that everyone is freaking out and scrambling to try and find alternatives and no one really knows what's causing all these problems with Facebook Ads Manager. And it's not surprising that Facebook hasn't addressed any of these issues or why they may have increased in frequency in the recent months. 
So this has caused people to come up with their own theories. Most think Facebook is doing major updates to the platform and that's why things are slowing down and errors are occurring. Some people believe that the approaching Black Friday and Cyber Monday are causing the lack of performance they're currently seeing on the platform, as they believe people don't want to buy products right before major sales. But some buyers believe that the real reason for the decline in performance is because users are leaving Facebook. In fact, Facebook has lost 15 million US users in the past two years. Also, according to some ad buyers, their Instagram ad campaigns, which can also be run through Facebook Ads Manager, aren't performing any better. So both these platforms have reached plateaus and now they are losing users by the millions. One ad buyer simply said, that's why the ads suck. No one is there to see them. The users have left the platform. What do you guys think? Are Facebook ads doomed? Do you even still use Facebook? Let us know your thoughts and join the conversation in the comments section below. Let's talk about robocalls. This is something that I'm sure everyone has experienced. You get a phone call from a random number and if you answer, you hear an automated message played as if you're talking to a robot. Sometimes it might be a pre-recorded voice message that plays as well. Robocalls are often associated with political and telemarketing phone campaigns, but they can also be used for public service or emergency announcements. I'd say more times than not, it's usually some type of spam that is a nuisance. In recent years, robocalls have been plaguing our society with a barrage of unwanted phone calls. 43 billion calls in 2019, with an average of 131 calls per person in the US alone is not something that should be ignored. And no matter how careful you are with your number, no matter what security measures you take, your number will still eventually wind up on a robocalling list or two. So for our second main story this week, we're gonna break down the most popular types of robocall scams and how to avoid them. Robocalls are running rampant all over the world right now, and they have evolved into clever schemes with messages that are actually fooling people. Nowadays, robocalls may try to scare you or threaten you. They prey on your cybersecurity fears and tell you to act immediately before some type of consequence happens. A recent robocall scam that's been used a lot lately is scammers pretending to be Apple support. Here's an example of one of these fake Apple scam calls. This is Molly from Apple support. We have found some suspicious activities in your iCloud account that your iCloud account has been breached. Before using any Apple device, please contact Apple support advisor. You see how they try to trick you into thinking it's real by saying there's been some suspicious activity and that your iCloud account has been breached. You know, they try and scare you. So would you fall for that scam? Be honest with yourself. <laughs> People are very paranoid these days and they might really think that it's Apple contacting them about an emergency. The robocallers try and make it seem as legit as possible. Obviously, common sense would probably tell you that it's a scam, but then again, that's something that not everyone has. If everyone had common sense, these robocalls probably wouldn't be as successful as they are into scamming people. It's a numbers game. You call millions upon millions of people and you're bound to land some suckers. <laughs> Another popular type of robocalls are the ones that offer you money. They offer you a refund or say you qualify for a grant or cash advance. Here's a perfect example of one of these types of calls. This is Kathy Jackson. I am calling you from Microsoft Refund Department. Please do not hang up. You have paid for your computer technical support few months ago. We are calling to refund your money as the company has been ordered to close down. Please call us on our number, 5622394557. Repeating again, 5622394557. Thank you. 
Offering a refund for services is not a bad approach as well, but anytime the speech isn't correct and it's glitchy, it's obviously a scam. So if you ever answer a call and any of these red flags pop up and you know it's a robocall, just hang up immediately. The abuse of robocalls and the abundance of them is a growing problem around the world. According to the FTC, five U.S. states contribute to the top locations for robocall origination, with Mexico, the Philippines, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and India completing that list. So what can we do to stop robocalls? You can try your best to shield your personal information from being publicly shared or leaked online, but the simplest and most effective method is just to not answer. Don't pick up. If a random or weird number calls you, just don't answer. Always try to avoid the hassle by resisting the temptation to press buttons or pick up and yell. Robocall scammers have refined their methods repeatedly and now they are known to trap even the most savvy of people. So just let it ring and go to voicemail. Let us know your experiences with robocalls. Do you have any other suggestions on how we can prevent them? Let's continue this conversation in the comments section below. Hit us up with your thoughts, comments, or ideas. Closing out this week, I wanna thank everyone for tuning in to Offer Vault News. Make sure you subscribe for new episodes as always, I'm your host, Eddie Grand, and I want you to email us your dirt. I want you to tell us about people who didn't pay. Tell us about people who are running scams. We want to know about people that ripped you off. We want to hear about all of this. So please feel free to contact us via email. You can send everything to tips at offervault.com. Once again, that's tips at OfferVault.com. We want to hear from you. Eddie Grand, OfferVault News, signing out. We'll see you next time.